everybody. I see some MySQL guys here as I am MySQL guy. So you might wonder why I'm speaking about Postgres. And a uh, little introduction, if you don't know me, I'm uh, Percone CTO and co-founder since 2006. Leading uh, currently product engineering team. Primarily MySQL expert, but I am database enthusiast in general. And there is some technology, new technology in Postgres space, which caught my attention. So that's why I decided to dig uh, a little more into that and uh, uh, share uh, with you what I found, uh, what we have in Percona, and maybe that will be also of uh, interest for you. So uh, the technology name is a, a Neon, and uh, they pr primarily focus on uh, their cloud uh, services, but uh, they also develop it in open source way so their technology actually available as uh, open source on GitHub, uh, but they provide only source code. You cannot go and uh, deploy it uh, uh, yourself. And in Percona, we decided we provide you binaries and some instructions and uh, some deployment feeds, how you can deploy and how it, uh, you can use it or play with your, uh, uh, with your own. So, and the... Uh, the whole, uh, uh, whole idea behind the technology is to have separation storage and uh, compute. Basically, the uh, Neon takes a PostgreSQL server and uh, they separate sto storage from uh, my computer layer and it allows you to achieve some interesting, interesting qualities for database. I would say in some, uh, some novel a innovational database quality. Uh, so let's see what uh, uh, it allows you to achieve. One, one thing is a uh, multi-tenancy. Then uh, if you have uh, a separate storage server, now you can pack uh, multiple, multiple tenants into single uh, storage. And then you can have multiple compute nodes. Uh, the same you can scale uh, this kind of compute workload or scale your storage size depending on your uh, tenants you have. And that's uh, uh, that's uh, already interesting. Now you also can have this uh, separation between writes uh, and the uh, reads. Even for single tenant, you have single writer and uh, multiple uh, readers. And uh, this all can be separate um, uh, compute nodes and you can scale your readers as uh, uh, as, you, as you need. That uh, it uh, can uh, provide you uh, uh, cheap, easy copy and write uh, 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 branches. Basically, you can use a snapshot, kind of like a Z, ZFS snapshot, and you can clone one tenant branch in, into uh, uh, another tenant with copy and write mechanism that uh, by default it will be zero overhead, but the overhead will grow as you continue to make changes into primary branch, but uh, uh, you have this branching data capabilities, which are uh, uh, also interesting. See? Uh, how, uh, how they achieve the separation between storage and uh, com computer a little will go a little bit more into uh, technical details uh, how how it works so mm, uh, compute node it is uh, basically uh, basically postgresql uh, instance with uh, minimal changes and the storage uh, uh, system it is a new one storage system it is what is a open source and that's uh, what uh, uh, what available and basically they run uh, page uh, servers uh, separately. And uh, from a compute node, from PostgreSQL, you ship a uh, uh, wall uh, records. Uh, let me go on to uh, a different slide. So mm, yeah, what happens when you perform transaction? In transaction uh, in MySQL world, it is, it is in ADB uh, log records. In PostgreSQL world, it is a wall records. So uh, when you make changes to your data, Compute node ships uh, wall records into separate safekeeper 
which uh, somewhere in memory uh, for uh, a little latency, but because it's memory, they recommend to run multiple nodes, say three nodes, when they with um, uh, uh, strong consistency, when uh, uh, these instances in memory instances confirm wall records, your transaction considered committed, and then uh, eventually these uh, wall records are uh, uh, getting shipped to page server. But uh, uh, on a compute node, when you perform write operation, it all, all only works as a wall records. For compute for Postgres itself, it's like no no operation. They basically uh, uh, fix this uh, PostgreSQL that writes are not performed. And uh, if you need to perform a read from a uh, storage, that uh, read uh, goes through a uh, page server, right? So, yeah, we have uh, three uh, uh, all multiple running safekeepers, uh, wall stored in memory and duplicated on SSD, strong uh, consistency algorithm, Paxos, which guarantee uh, uh, transactional durability. And uh, like I said, uh, it uh, uh, performs uh, uh, very fast. You want uh, a minimal latency on your uh, uh, transaction side. And uh, then uh, what happens, uh, they rearrange this uh, wall uh, files uh, into immutable files. They ship to page server, they apply it, uh, that uh, kind of that you can reapply them multiple times if needed. But uh, a cold copy, kind of cold copy stored on the SS3 kind of storage where it uh, potentially can be used uh, for uh, recovery if uh, later needed, if you need to recover from uh, some uh, uh, disastrous uh, uh, scenario. Uh, but uh, basically it makes uh, uh, all uh, uh, these components uh, disposable. Uh, the only hard storage you can uh, rely is this S3 storage, when you have your copy of data, you can ship it, you can uh, uh, destroy your current uh, environment, and uh, then you can start uh, up your new environment uh, ba based on uh, this, uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on, stored, on stored data. And uh, uh, read, uh, read path is very easy when you uh, read page which is missed from local cache on compute node. It is performed from a uh, page server it uh, adds a little bit network latency, but uh, 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 yeah, I think it's worth uh, benefit it, uh, it, it provides. So uh, let's uh, see what uh, benefits of this uh, setup uh, uh, I see. Well, again, that uh, compute node is kind of totally disposable and it can be actually started or destroyed on a demand. If you don't have users for uh, your current data set, you actually don't need to run uh, any compute nodes. The data can be stored uh, on a page server. Uh, you don't need to do anything with it. If you need to start working with the data, you can start a compute node. And actually, uh, size size of your compute node can scale depending on your demand. If they expect uh, multiple uh, connections, multiple users, it can be a bigger instance if you expect a small workload. It can be a small instance that you can scale your uh, compute needs uh, depending on your uh, workload, uh, uh, on demand of your workload on, on compute side. Actually, yeah, another uh, benefit, uh, like I said, the read-only uh, uh, replicas. You can scale uh, uh, read-only workloads just uh, by adding readers, uh, read-only uh, compute nodes, no data duplication for uh, read replicas. You just start compute node and you can read the uh, data. It's not like in MySQL with a uh, read replication when you actually, for uh, read uh, replicas, you need to copy data on your read replicas. In this setup, you just uh, start up a, a reader uh, compute node and you can scale, uh, scale your reads. Yeah. 
and uh, uh, potentially there are work in progress to make this uh, uh, storage page server uh, extendable. So if you run out of capacity on your page server, you can easily extend it to add uh, data volumes, uh, 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 data volumes, and uh, potentially you can use you can uh, ship and use data to as uh, three uh, storage. And uh, uh, another interesting capability which it gives, which uh, also caught my attention, is uh, data, we name it a data branching. And uh, again, it goes back to this uh, uh, copy on the right uh, capabilities. And uh, there are some uh, use cases when, if, for example, you want to test a schema change and you don't want to mess with your primary uh, data set, you will create branch without affecting primary data set. You test with your schema changes. You test your queries. Uh, you like them or not. Uh, depending on the result, you can uh, propagate the same changes on main data set. Uh, and uh, 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 discard the uh, unneeded branch. And uh, yeah, uh, another use case, it can be integrated in your uh, integration, uh, continuous integration workflow, when for each pull request, you can create data branch, run your test, uh, run your integration, see everything runs properly, and uh, 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 without affecting main uh, data branch. So, uh, the way to think about the uh, data branches, it's uh, similar like uh, Git uh, uh, hub uh, uh, branches or uh, Neon also uses this timelines uh, terminology. You basically can uh, fork uh, data for after it, uh, any commit and uh, fork data from fork data and you have this uh, tree of different branches uh, where then you can uh, actually start a com compute uh, uh, node on any of uh, branches you want and continue to work with that specific uh, uh, specific uh, history and specific data branch. Uh, and uh, uh, it also allows you to provide these capabilities like kind of a backup. Uh, is backup kind of getting out of box because Neon keeps uh, all the history and they push them to S3 storage. And that means you actually can uh, create branch from any point of time. If you need to go back a uh, few days uh, back, at a given point of, point of time, you can uh, instruct anyone to retrieve data at that point of time. And uh, it basically works as your uh, backup and uh, 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 recovery procedures. So let's review what uh, changes has been done on the Postgres side. And um, uh, there actually, uh, to post, what is attractive for me also, there is minimal changes on PostgreSQL side. So basically you can expect a minimal, a minimal uh, uh, effect on your application workload. There are no changes to planner or executor. There is a, it supports all Postgres extension and tools. It supports all index types. Uh, uh, it comes with Postgres MVCC. The ch changes, again, very minimal. Minimal diff from PostgreSQL. Uh, it's a very uh, low, uh, uh, low level changes. Basically, they modify read and write uh, IO operation on, uh, on PostgreSQL source code. And uh, now if you want uh, to experiment uh, with it, uh, uh, like I wanted, uh, there is no builds from uh, Neons, but we're going to provide uh, experimental builds, which uh, you can uh, go and uh, try to experiment and test uh, yourself. Uh, you can uh, deploy in your own infrastructure. You can deploy in your virtual machine on bare metal, whatever, uh, whatever is a uh, 
attractive for you. And uh, we provide the Turbo uh, uh, binaries available from our GitHub. Uh, we provide the Docker images, which you can go uh, and install or our uh, Ansible scripts uh, available, which you, where you can get the idea how to deploy and what sequence of uh, steps uh, to use uh, uh, for uh, deployment. And there are some uh, uh, documentation to follow if you want to understand what's going on and how to, to use all uh, these components. And uh, uh, before uh, we deploy, there are some uh, resource uh, planning to keep in mind. There is still a lot of moving components. There is not automatic where Neon, they provide you cloud instance, but if you want to deploy yourself, you still need to figure out what uh, resources you need and how to deploy them, what sequence. So uh, multiple uh, uh, safe keepers, uh, uh, ideally independent, uh, as they again work in a strong uh, consensus algorithm access. If uh, one fails, the rest uh, should be able to, uh, to operate. There is a, a page server which uh, will store all your data. So uh, capacity, uh, plan your capacity on the uh, data uh, side. The cloud storage, uh, uh, basically just SS3 endpoint, which you can use. And the uh, compute nodes, uh, it is scalable, depends on your needs. If uh, you expect high workload, it can be bigger nodes. If uh, you expect lower workload, it can be uh, uh, lower nodes. So basically you need to think uh, what uh, resources you, you need to use for a safekeeper or storage. Uh, for storage broker, it basically just uh, uh, I see it uh, like message queue agent uh, does not uh, require a lot of resources, but uh, cloud uh, nodes spun up on demand. You need to understand what kind of uh, workload on uh, compute nodes uh, you can see. And uh, there are also some other uh, consideration to uh, to take. Uh, well. Because uh, ideally you would uh, use uh, uh, all these components on uh, uh, different uh, uh, machines, different systems, that uh, where uh, where network speed uh, comes into play. Uh, uh, of course, uh, you want uh, to minimize uh, uh, latency for your queries, and that this is where on your transactional rights latency will come into play, or your uh, uh, reads. Uh, when you read data, which are not in a local cache, but on page servers, then uh, network latency also will come into play. So uh, from this standpoint, uh, network uh, uh, latency is uh, uh, is uh, critical to consider because it uh, will affect your experience and end user and user performance. And then, uh, yeah. Obviously, uh, storage uh, speed uh, and size also important, depending how many uh, tenants you want to have, how much uh, data you want to pack into page servers, and the speed of that storage obviously will impact your performance and performance of, uh, of your queries. So some other resource consideration to take when you try to play with this uh, uh, solution. And uh, then uh, a little bit on the uh, details uh, on uh, deployment steps. Uh, uh, sequence of deployment is important. You start, you start a storage broker. This is a message uh, 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 queue, uh, which needs to be available when you start uh, safekeepers. Uh, there are multiple of them. And then after that, you start a page server and all these uh, components and work on uh, uh, unison to handle uh, your request from uh, compute nodes. And uh, uh, there are some uh, 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 Docker uh, commands. You don't need to look into details of them, but if you want to experiment, that's something you can take uh, and uh, uh, try on yourself uh, using our Docker images uh, that would allow you to deploy uh, this solution. Yeah, and uh, uh, 
uh, uh, uh, next step, you will need to create uh, tenants. Uh, by default, it is a multi-tenant, but at least it would require one uh, tenant to uh, to start. So uh, you and uh, uh, our tenant uh, tenant size, I define like uh, what is data storage, how much uh, how much data you want uh, to pack uh, for this uh, tenant, and uh, mm, when you started your tenant, we can uh, proceed with uh, uh, compute nodes. Again, again, in the size and uh, 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 memory, CPU, uh, power, power of uh, compute nodes uh, depends on your workload. How much uh, 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 CPU intensive workload you will put on that compute node, and but uh, on the storage size, on the I/O size, you can uh, delegate that work on a page server. So, uh, to uh, uh, reiterate, what interesting for me from this technology is uh, I want uh, to move forward and uh, proceed. It. We really at the end to that we separate uh, storage and uh, compute, and the uh, storage and compute then uh, they can grow or uh, shrink uh, independently, and you can have this uh, scaling storage as if you need to scale in data size or you can scale in compute if you want to scale in cpu and memory uh, protection uh, uh, size and again compute nodes can be started and uh, uh, shut down uh, independently uh, 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 of each other and actually you don't need to use compute nodes if you don't need uh, uh, cpu resources for that uh, data set And uh, uh, yeah, resources uh, again. I would like to say uh, thanks in Neon to make this uh, uh, technology uh, open uh, open source. Yeah, we have our web page uh, dedicated for this tech. If you want, get uh, downloads, links, uh, some documentation steps. If you want to contact me and uh, discuss uh, about this tech and. Uh, yeah, I used some slides from uh, Neon materials and, and documentation to uh, uh, to provide this presentation. Well, and the, this actually all from me about this Neon technology, but I think we might can use this time to discuss if it's interest for you or what kind of questions do you have to this tech? Do you see this interesting not? And uh, what would you like to see next uh, from this technology? Daniel, I'm sure you you might have you might have some ideas. Yeah. Why not EBS volumes? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, SS3 is kind of standard uh, uh, for data data exchange, and uh, you don't necessarily. Uh, what is it? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, SS3 storage can be emulated by uh, uh, other S3 implementations that is not necessarily Amazon dependent. Yeah, absolutely. You you would use it as store only to store uh, data, but again, it's, it's uh, you just use a API protocol. You can use a Minio, or you can use a, 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 some file system which uh, emulates uh, S3. And uh, use uh, store uh, store data there if you want to deploy it without Amazon. Right, absolutely, yeah. That's all based on on Wolf files. Uh, yeah, let me. Uh, I I uh, I am not sure if it's uh, available totally uh, uh, out of box uh, uh, right now. Yeah, I understand what, what you're saying to control uh, history. Yeah, uh, I don't know uh, full answer of that question. Yeah, yeah, uh, I do not. No, it's always question, but uh, compute nodes, it's always, you know, uh, local, lo locally running instances with local memory and the practically no storage. So if that's not memory, if that's not in cache memory, it, will, it would need to fetch from, from page server. Well, uh, I think it, it would. Well, obviously, Linux always comes with uh, uh, 
with o o OS cache. And when you perform IO operation, even from network, as I understand, it will be it will be stored in local pair. Oh no, 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 it's not sure that it is again single uh, currently single page server. Well, you have you can have multiple page server, but basically you see storage as bigger monolithic storage. It's uh, not sure that it's a bigger bulk uh, bulk storage. Uh, and you can pack with tenants, uh, branches, uh, and operate it on that side. Hey, Alex. Yeah. On my scale? Maybe we, we can work on that together. No, but uh, uh, yeah, that's a, a, a good a good uh, question. And uh, I was uh, thinking about that, but you see, and maybe, maybe we can have a chat of what kind of... Uh, uh, subsystem in MySQL we need to to patch to to come to to similar to similar computation. Is this even feasible in, in MySQL to do this? Yeah, wall. Yeah, wall. It's a, a redo log. Well, uh, the question there's also multiple uh, on another subsystem like undo uh, slots. Um, yeah, yeah, so I think uh, Postgres is here, much girl. Otherwise, yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Yes. I will take 20 minutes back. Yep.